start by uh, this wonderful quote, which is a very old one, given by Aristotle. The whole is greater than its parts. That is precisely what a mosaic means, right? So, uh, my name is Dr. Ashu Khosla, and I am very grateful, very honored to be a part of this wonderful event in this wonderful venue with you all. When we talk about life, you'll all agree life is a mosaic as well, and life is made of moments. But if we look at our lives uh, carefully, we'll realize that it's often the moments which seem very trivial, you know, inconsequential. Uh, people whom you take for granted in your lives, experiences that are short and fleeting, are often the ones which impact uh, your lives the most. Or as I could put it in a way, uh, where I say that these are the things which are the most important pieces of your mosaic. So, um, let me take you on the journey of my mosaic, my life, the mosaic that I am. And when you ask somebody uh, to talk about their life journey, uh, they generally start from their childhood, and I'm no different. I start from my childhood as well. Childhood is basically um, many happy memories. One of my earliest memories is peering into a kaleidoscope uh, where broken pieces of colored glass catch the beautiful sunlight and make innumerable mesmerizing patterns. Turning broken things into something beautiful, that was the forte of my grandfather. Here he is, it's a pencil sketch of him done by my father. So my grandfather would, you know, take an old piece of newspaper and turn it into a kite. He would pick up a paper bag and convert it into a paper ball. A few snips of scissors and a waste piece of plastic would suddenly be converted into a beautiful flower. Now, uh, these tips and tricks for doing this craft work, he taught uh, to me and my cousins. So very early on in my life, I realized how beautiful it is to hold something that you have created on your own. The pleasure that it gives you is unparalleled. The kind of joy that uh, creating something brings is, uh, you know, unimaginable. So this revelation of the secret happened very early on for me. And uh, I held on to the secret, and I still do. So whenever my life is lacking a little bit of happiness, all I have to do is create some of my own. So for example, I remember two stories uh, in particular. So once while working for a pharmaceutical company, we were just preparing for a conference uh, on tuberculosis. Now tuberculosis is a boring old disease. Nothing new has happened uh, for years uh, when it comes to tubercular treatment. So we were thinking about what gifts should we give to our audiences who are doctors. So I was researching a few things on tuberculosis and I came across a man called Chopin. He was a prodigy pianist who died very early in his 30s and supposedly from tuberculosis. So I picked up music CDs of Chopin and gifted them to the doctors who were attending the conference. That is creativity as well. In another instance, while I was working in the UAE, um, I remember having been entrusted with the challenge of conveying a new quality policy to our 1,500 strong um, you know, workforce, which came not only from different parts of India, but from different countries of the Indian subcontinent. They spoke different languages, they were of different uh, educational levels. How do I convey something to an audience like this? So I thought of the common thread that binds us all, Bollywood. So my presentation had clips from Bollywood movies, Bollywood film songs, which were used to des describe or convey concepts like timely delivery and customer service to all these people. So creativity was again a source of happiness and effectiveness. 
all these experiments of mine, which I have been, you know, uh, doing all along, uh, you know, culminated in a book which I wrote in 2017, and the book was called Off the Corporate Bus and Into the Creativity Boat. And of course, the biggest inspiration behind that book was my grandfather, and I dedicated the book to him. He was indeed the master of small c. Small c means creativity that you indulge in everyday life. Uh, moving on, uh, my grandfather was not a very highly educated man. In fact, he did not complete even his formal education from school because due to an untimely, you know, tragic death of his father, he had to drop out of school and take responsibility for the family. So he relied upon his artistic talent to support his family. Um, he used to paint signboards. Uh, he used to go out onto the highways and paint milestones. But uh, it did not prevent him uh, from seeking knowledge and wisdom. My grandfather loved poetry, music. He taught himself to read and write four different languages. And he also ensured that his kids were very well educated, right? So my father and my uncle both were engineers and they retired at uh, the very top positions in the state. So on the left, you can see my father as a young engineer posing in a building. It was his first project out of college. So my father was also very particular about educating his children, uh, given his experience with education. Um, he was very particular about the schools that my siblings and I went to, the marks we scored in our school. Uh, even when we were on holidays and he was driving us to some place, he would make our lives miserable by asking us to solve mental math questions or some concepts of physics he would ask us about. And on more than one occasion, I remember feigning motion sickness just to avoid answering questions like, if 10 men built a wall in five days, how many men would it take to build the wall in two days? Uh, but that love for knowledge, that rigor, that going deep into concepts, I think has stayed with me. And today, uh, I am a teacher myself. Uh, if I have to go into a class, I have to go prepared. I have to brush up the subject I have to think of new contextual uh, examples, otherwise I'm not very pleased with myself. Um, so uh, the other picture that you see here is me receiving my gold medals for my medicine, and my father seems very happy, and me not so much, and I'll come to that in a bit. But uh, let me tell you that um, my mother contributed uh, a lot to my academic success as well. She was, she was a teacher, she's retired now, of course. Uh, so her advice regarding uh, school and do performing well in school was very practical and logical and came from her own experience of being a teacher. So um, I remember her shouting behind us as we left for our school exam, write neatly, you know, draw your margins, don't write big paragraphs, write points, don't forget to do the diagrams, so all this advice came in very handy uh, for us to do well in school. Now, uh, some of uh, her pushing us to achieve and um, you know, aspire to be something uh, you know, bigger also came, I think, from her um, unfulfilled dreams. She wanted to be a lawyer, but you can imagine at that point of time, um, her family, did not allow her to go out to study, uh, wanted her to get married early and settle down in life. Eventually, after she fought back, she was allowed to become a teacher, which was, quote unquote, an acceptable profession for uh, a woman to have at that point of time. Now, years later, I am uh, coming back from the US after attending an executive education program, and I'm taking this flight back home from Boston. Uh, and as the plane is moving on the runway, I glance outside my window and I see this uh, woman uh, 
They are called aircraft marshals, you might know of them. They signal uh, to the planes as they are you know, taking off on the runway. So uh, I saw this and you know, uh, probably in your lingo, that lady would be called a boss lady. Her body language, uh, her manner, which was so self-assured and confident, it somehow, you know, um, caused a pang in my heart because I suddenly remembered my mother and I thought of what she could be. No, I didn't want her to be an aircraft marshal signaling airplanes, but I felt that she had the potential to become a leader. Uh, she could have succeeded very well as a lawyer, as a judge, um, as a leader in a political party maybe, or as a CEO of a company. I want them to be as confident, as you know, self-assured as she was, and then there would be no stopping them. Um, so my academic journey was not all uh, very rosy. There were some uh, ups and downs that happened. My reason to leave medicine, for instance, um, so that was a question, you know, uh, that I have faced, uh, and I continue to face even till date. Why did you do that? Now, when I look back and uh, try to see why I did that, uh, what comes to mind is the fact that I have a very strong empathetic technique. Now, on paper, a strongly empathetic person would make a great doctor, but that, that is really not the case. Um, somebody who's strongly empathetic like I am would have to suffer uh, because I would internalize all the pains that my patient was suffering and bring it back with me after work. Also, I thought at that point of time that medicine was um, a kind of a profession which required a lot of detail, routine work, you know, a lot of focus. And I was worried about the creative, intuitive part of me, which I felt that I would be neglecting if I continued in this profession. So after about two years of um, meandering goallessly here and there, I decided to sit for an MBA entrance exam. It was not easy because I had a one-year-old at home. I remember taking my GMAT when she was running 104 degrees uh, fever. And um, it was not easy to become a part of the founding class of the Indian School of Business, which, um, you know, is the Indian School of Business Hyderabad, as you all know, is not only the, one of the greatest business schools in the country, but also in the world. So uh, being a part of that class was difficult for me because I was touching 30 at that point of time, while the average age of the class was 24. Um, I had to balance between getting up in the morning to pack a, a lunchbox for my toddler who was going to play school with uh, late nights with my study group, which often used to stretch to midnight on most days. So uh, it was very difficult and my arch nemesis mathematics made a comeback. I had vowed never to learn or read or study mathematics after my 10th grade. But now it came and it came back with a vengeance. It came in the form of statistics, finance, cost accounting, microeconomics, and I was overwhelmed. Um, in the first term exam at ISV, I scored only Bs and Cs, which was so unlike what I was used to. Uh, after all, I was a gold medalist in my medical college. So there were days when I thought that I will quit, but um, my inner resilience, inner tenacity uh, kept me going. And I also had a very supporting life partner who played a part. Uh, so this is me on my graduation day with my daughter. <laughs> so um, talking about my life partner, I think he has been very instrumental in, uh, you know, helping me broaden my horizons. He has asked me time and again to go out, explore the possibilities, to discover myself in more than ways than one. Uh, he's an avid reader. So I used to be uh, a lover of books, but um, my love for the written word has only increased after meeting this man. 
He has introduced to me uh, different genres, not just in books, but in movies. He has a passion for technology. And uh, I see him, you know, every day keeping abreast with the changes that are happening around us. And not just that, he upskills himself um, to keep, you know, pace with the changing technology. So he inspired me when I took up a, a part-time assignment in 2013 at this university, Shulini University, where I am currently. The university had been set up by my father-in-law. And when I took up this assignment, I decided to build an e-learning platform for them. So this was 2013. People did not know what was coming ahead. So because we had a five-year or a six-year head start, uh, when COVID struck, we were one of the first universities in the country to switch to online learning, exams, and other activities within four days. And I'm not exaggerating. So I feel very particularly proud of uh, the success of mine. Um, so, so students use this platform uh, very often. Uh, I love teaching them. I love mentoring them. Um, they come up to me uh, for advice. Uh, my strong streak of empathy is finally being put to good use. Because it's not just academic matters that they come and discuss with me. Sometimes it gets very personal as well. Just a few months ago, an international student lost his mother. And he could not go home because of his visa issues. He was very distraught and almost inconsolable. I remember walking up with him to this little temple uh, we have in the campus and we sat there for a few minutes. I held his hand while copious tears flows, flowed down his eyes. Suddenly from somewhere, a butterfly came and perched itself on a pillar just across us. And it sat there for several minutes, which is unlike any butterfly that I have known because butterflies generally flit and fly very quickly. Uh, so this student uh, after watching the butterfly says, my mother loved them. And I replied back saying, maybe it's her. She's come back to see and check if you're doing okay. He smiled uh, in, um, in between his tears and I squeezed his hand. That was a perfect moment for me. Perfect moment where everything that I was doing, the meaning of who I was very clear, everything was aligning with the universe. Now we love these perfect moments in our life. But unfortunately, the perfect moments are far and few. However, uh, going through the imperfect mo moments um, is equally important because going through them makes you reach that one perfect moment. And uh, then it becomes uh, the, all the pain, all the suffering, all the ups and downs become worthwhile. So as I continue to live, my mosaic life. Um, I will continue to carry uh, my five mantras with me. I'll know that as long as I am creative, I can create my own happiness. As long as I keep seeking knowledge, I will continue to grow my confidence. As long as I am resilient and tenacious, uh, my self-belief is intact. Um, as long as I explore new dimensions to my life, uh, to the things that I do, I will continue to grow. And finally, the, the empathy that is so much a part of me will continue to be the sense of my life and continue to give me meaning. Thank you so much.